welcome to this new video for my channel, The Mental Traveler. I'm Caro Herrera, and today I'm going to be talking about the celebrated last queen of France, Marie Antoinette. I shall be reviewing that 2001 biography, Marie Antoinette, The Journey, by Antonia Fraser, as well as several movies about this queen concert. I shall talk about the 1938 film with Norma Shearer and Tyrone Power, the 2001 movie called The Affair of the Necklace, with Jolie Richardson, Brian Cox, Hilary Swank, Simon Baker, Adrian Brody, among others, 2006 movie starring Kristen Dunst, Jason Schwartzman, Tom Hardy, Rose Byrne, Mary Nye, Jimmy Jordan, and the 2012 film called Farewell My Queen with Diane Kruger and Leah Sedu. Before I begin though, let me just say a thing about spoilers. This is history, so unless you don't know all that much about Marie Antoinette and the French Revolution, beware. Still, I'm gonna try to review the book and the movies in a spoiler-free way. Marie Antoinette was born an Austrian princess who in her early teens got married to the heir to the French throne, Louis XVI, and by the age of 19 had become Queen of France. Marie Antoinette was a shy, charming girl, but her husband was even shyer than her, so the marriage wasn't actually consummated till after like seven years of their union. Still, with time the two grew closer and they ended up having four children, three of whom died young. Some of the things that Marie Antoinette is most famous for are her sense of fashion, her extravagant parties, and the fact that with time the French people began to hate her because there was a sharp contrast with how the nobility lived and how the poor lived. They were starving and dying of cold among other problems. There are rumors that Marie Antoinette had a love affair that lasted several years with a Swedish count named Fersen, and I also like that aspect of her life. Even if it didn't really happen, though I do think it did, this fiction is still sweet. And in any case, because of him trying to help her during her most troubled times, we can at least be certain that they were good friends. Anyways, by the time Marie Antoinette was in her 30s, the French Revolution was already underway, a period in which she was dethroned alongside her husband, making them the last king and queen of France. The last years of Marie Antoinette are very sad, seeing as everyone accused her of the most vile things without actual proof. Anyways, she was killed in the guillotine before she was even 40, months after her husband had suffered the same fate. Adding all of these elements, and more I have not yet mentioned, they all helped to make Marie Antoinette one of the most famous figures in French history, and there is no doubt that throughout the centuries the fascination humankind has had for her has only grown, making her not only a celebrity while she was alive, but a legend long after she passed away. My loyalties are to her even though I know she wasn't the cleverest regarding politics for example, but I love her despite what I may perceive are her flaws. She may have been vain and selfish at some points, but she nonetheless has my respect and admiration. I gave Antonia Fraser's book a 5 out of 5 stars review. I haven't read many other similar books about Marie Antoinette, so I can't compare this biography with others, but I still think it's a very complete narrative. It would have been cool if it had been written as historical fiction, but that's just a small whim. It's still perfect as a sort of objective biography. It's very thorough, and although I already knew many of the things mentioned in it, there were still things that surprised me, and by the last chapters I was crying floods of tears. Regarding the films, the 1938 movie is my favorite alongside the 2006 film. Sure, it's a bit overdramatic, but when I first saw it as a teenager, I was swept off my feet by the love affair between Marie Antoinette and Count Fersen, seeing as it focuses a lot on them. It's not very historically accurate, but Norma Shearer is a delightful Marie Antoinette. The transition she goes through from a 14-year-old girl to a tired, condemned woman is amazing. Plus, this movie shows Marie Antoinette up to her very last moments, unlike many of the other adaptations. Also, the thing that I like was the way they showed her maternal side, but I didn't like how they portrayed her as having a lot of political influence over her husband, when that wasn't exactly true except for a brief period. The 2001 version called The Affair of the Necklace isn't completely about Marie Antoinette. It focuses on a period of her life when she was a victim of a scheme by the protagonist and others of this movie, which only helped to fuel her unpopularity among the masses. I hate John de la Motte, and while this version shows Marie Antoinette as being rather vain and all high and mighty, Julie Richardson is the daughter of one of my favorite actresses, Vanessa Redgrave, so I enjoyed her take on the Queen. And in any case, this film tries to make the viewer feel compassion for Jean de la Motte, so of course it would portray Marie Antoinette more as an antagonist, but I don't care. Marie Antoinette rocks both in real life and in the movie. The 2006 film is a gorgeous feast for the eyes. It was shot in Versailles like parts of the 30s one, and the costumes are beautiful beyond words. I like Don's take on Marie Antoinette, even though the movie doesn't show that much depth or has that much dialogue, and isn't very historically accurate. Even when I was a teenager though, all of the unsaid things in the movie made me feel the need to fill those gaps only increasing my love for Marie Antoinette with everything I imagined or discovered about her throughout my research 
Finally, farewell my queen is about a chambermaid who admires Marie Antoinette. It's said when the French Revolution is about to drive Marie Antoinette and her family from Versailles to be taken to Paris as prisoners of the National Assembly. During Marie Antoinette's lifetime, she was rumored to have had many lovers, both male and female, and in this adaptation they focus a lot on her relationship with one of her best friends, Gabrielle, Duchess of Polignac. I'm afraid I'm not quite sure how I came to learn about Marie Antoinette. I can recall if I knew of her before the 2006 movie came out. But in any case, I've always loved history and queens and kings. I'm a royalist. So when I did learn about Marie Antoinette, she instantly caught my attention. I think she was the first queen besides Anne Boleyn whose lives I found fascinating. But yeah, when I saw Sofia Coppola's version of Marie Antoinette's life, I was mesmerized. And I remember that in middle school, I read this biography whose author I can remember about her wanting to learn as much as I could about this woman. I love Marie Antoinette's life, her character, her sense of fashion. Anyways, with time I've seen many documentaries about her, many movies, miniseries, and I also got Fraser's biography when I was in my teens, seeing as it was the one that inspired the 2006 movie. I also have one that's not very good about a fictional nursemaid that takes care of Marie Antoinette since she's a child. And well, getting back to the movies and miniseries about Marie Antoinette, besides the one that I mentioned earlier, there is one from the 80s with Jane Seymour playing the Queen, as well as this gorgeous animated series called Lady Oscar, which is about a female bodyguard that looks after Marie Antoinette. And then I recall that she appears briefly in a miniseries called Sally Hemings. Finally, another thing that I found really cool about Marie Antoinette was that she was pen pals with Georgiana, Duchess of Devonshire, which is a historical figure that I also admire and I love the movie based on her life, The Duchess, with Kira Knightley. And well, Marie Antoinette also met Emma Hamilton, who was a mistress of the famous Nelson, one of Napoleon's enemies and Britain's heroes. And Emma was really close to Marie Antoinette's sister, Maria Carolina. So yeah, I think it's just really cool how all of these women that I admire got to meet or at least wrote letters to each other. For the moment though, I believe this is all I have to say about Marie Antoinette and her story. Thank you very much for watching my review of this biography and some of the movies made about her life. Please let me know if you agree with me or not and what are your own thoughts of The Last Queen of France because I would love to talk about her with you. In the description box below you can find a link to the Goodreads page for Antonia Fraser's biography as well as a link to the 1938 IMDb page, 2006 movie, the 2012 adaptation and the 2001 film. Anyways, I'm Caro Herrera, the mental traveler, and I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. I'll be seeing you soon. Goodbye.